Well, good day and welcome back. Today I'm expecting a fairly straightforward repair. This is an Astor radio from about 1958. Well, they started building them in 58. I don't know when this one was made. There's nothing particularly special about this radio. Now, the reason I've been looking for one of these is uh, my late brother bought one, uh, I don't know when it was, in the 60s sometime. So I was probably uh, gearing near 10. He was about 10 years older than me. He started working, came home with this in a box one day and put it on the dressing table between the two of us and uh, he would leave it on all night uh, very low volume and in the morning turn it up and we you know enjoy the music while we lay in bed for a few extra minutes anyway it's just been a bit of a quest for me to try and get the radios that I remember from my youth so this is the last one I think I've already got my swinging brick transistor and uh, the old HMV consort transistor which is a beauty but this is the last one I can remember we had Unfortunately, this one's got some little cracks here and one on the other side. Uh, the knobs look pretty ordinary. Uh, that more on the knobs later. Uh, but overall, it's pretty good. The cabinet itself, so what? Well, back's good. Uh, someone's cut the cord off the back there, so I'm not sure what that means. Now I think I've got a couple of spare chassis out in the garage for this model. So uh, if they're not this one, they look very similar. This sort of setup. And I've said it before, I did a HMV. This sort of vintage radio in Australia were pretty good. They had the smaller valves, lower heat, uh, good controls, nice case, and good big speakers in them too. So they were quite good radios. Now, if I didn't say it before, it's an Astor model BPJ, uh, built in Melbourne in 58 onwards. I'm not sure how long the production run was. So I'll take the back off and we'll have a look inside. Well, there it is, uh, absolutely typical layout for uh, this vintage of radio in Australia with five valves. Uh, these have got a big speaker in them. Uh, it's got the lipstick antenna. This one's got uh, quite a large um, tuning capacitor there. And Astor were playing around with that permeability tuning, so I'm sort of a bit surprised they've gone back to that again. But anyway, whatever reason. So I'll go one step further and take the chassis out. The, uh, they've gone to a lot of trouble to black this out. It's all black here. Got felt around the edges, some black um, netting over the speaker. Here's the typical last or cam that holds the dial glass in. I've had a look at the back, so I'll flip it over. We'll have a look at the bottom. Well, here's the bottom of it. Um, got all the old paper wax capacitors in it, of course. Uh, these are a sort of a new style of uh, electrolytics. I can see a replacement cap sitting here that's uh, relatively new. There's the output transformer. Uh, it's got a bit of physical damage on it. It's been bent or someone's put their finger on it or something. It wasn't me. So other than the capacitor change there, everything else looks pretty standard. Uh, the, uh, the solders haven't been tampered with, so yeah. All right, so I'm going to do some basic tests for the transformer and shorts and things like that, make sure everything's safe, and we'll plug it in. I'll have to put a cord on it and we'll see if it works. I normally do this off camera and just say that I've done it and uh, plug it in and we see what happens. Uh, what I'm going to do though is just check the continuity of this transformer and just make sure it's not going to ground. I haven't got a mega, I'm just going to use a normal DMM. So here's our transformer, the primary, secondary. This is off to the heaters, this little winding here. Now uh, the mains input, there's a double pole switch and uh, we're on the 240 volt line here. So I check that for continuity. I also check to make sure it's not going to ground. And I usually check the secondary here. This one, uh, the center tap's going straight to ground. So I'll connect a multimeter to the ground here and we should get a resistance either side of that. Here's the ground for the multimeter. I'll just stick it on there if you can see, it's right there. Here's the rectifier valve here. Uh, one and seven are the two secondaries. So we should get some sort of reading, 141. Sounds a bit right. And yeah, we should get a reading on there. Nothing? Oh, there we go. It wasn't open. Uh, 136. So that'll be right. Here's the plug for the power socket. I'll put one lead there and put one there. We should get a reading. Nope, opens. Oh, it's probably not turned on. Hang on. All right, we'll try that again. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't think I had it turned on then. Uh, still nothing. It's open. So I've got my DMM connected to one of the pins here. 
Uh, we should get continuity on one of these wires coming up to the switch here. Nothing. Uh, it must be this one here. Yeah, okay. So I'll just swap those over. Should be that one. Okay, so it's okay to there. I'll just try and get to the terminal here on the other side of the switch for this one. There we go. And we've got um, oh, a bit of resistance in it. Now it's open. Oh, maybe the switch is... Yeah, look at that. The switch is dodgy, I think. I don't know if I can get the other one. Oh, I think I've got it there. Yeah, it's a dodgy switch. All right, I'll have to bypass the switch. I've managed to solder onto the output side of the switch here to get it into the transformer. I can't get into the transformer any other way, so I've got to go down here. This transformer's mounted so close to this, it's crazy. All right, let's go back to our original test. Uh, this should go through the primary of the transformer. It should get, I don't know, 40-odd ohms. Yeah, 41. So I'll just ground, I'll ground the other one, just make sure it's not going to ground. No, it's not. Swap it over. No, it's not. So I think we're safe transformer-wise. Uh, I should be able to uh, plug this in. The test I just did on the transformer is only testing the transformer. There could be a massive short in the radio somewhere. I'm going to rely on the dim bulb to protect it, if that is the case. I've just attached my multimeter to the plate of this output valve. Uh, that'll just check the primary of this uh, output transformer. So if it's open circuit, I won't get any voltage there. I also cut out a little capacitor that goes on the plate to ground. I've attached my multimeter to the plate of this output valve, so it's pin 7. The power's coming up from the power transformer here. Go through the primary of this output transformer and you can read it here. If this is open, you won't get a voltage there. Uh, I cut this capacitor out here because the last time this was just going short to ground and pulling this all down. So I'll get rid of that now. It's not going to affect its operation as far as the testing is concerned. This uh, power supply here is isolated, so it's not connected to mains directly. It's through an isolation transformer. Uh, I've got the Variac set to 231 volts, that'll do. We'll put it on, I'm on dim bulb of course. And the bulb is working as you would expect. Uh, I've got some lights on the front panel here. So there's the plate now, it's um, reading, yeah, it's uh, not reading anything, okay. Alright, there's no voltage on the plate, I shall turn it off. So we probably think that transformer is open. I've just lifted the lead off the valve uh, for this output transformer and I've put my meter across the two leads, so we're across the primary. Uh, I've got my meter on ohms and it's open circuit, so that transformer is open circuit. I'm pretty sure I've got one of these chassis outside, I'll go and see if I can get a transformer off it. Okay, I was lucky enough to get another transformer, so I'll just test that and we'll see if that one works. And there's the meter there. Yeah, that's working. I don't think I've seen one with an open secondary, so we'll just test it anyway. Yeah, okay. I'll just swap these two transformers over, and before I put power on, uh, we'll see why this one failed. Uh, I'll test the circuits in here. To remove the transformer, I've got to take two screws and nuts out, and there's one of the nuts there, and the other one is right under the speaker here, so uh, I'll have to take the speaker off. It looks like this whole front panel comes off with these four screws, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take this dial glass out. And I should be able to just take these four screws out now. Uh, I'll take the speaker wires off. There's the transformer and the uh, two nuts and bolts. I'll just snip off the secondaries here. So I can easily get on the nut and uh, the screw head there and yeah, not so bad with that front cover off. Alright, there she is. Here's the old one and the new one. I won't show you me putting that in. It's the reverse of taking it out. 
I've refitted the output transformer and it's all connected up, ready to go. Uh, before I put power on, I'll check that uh, output valve, the 6M5, just make sure it's OK, and just make sure it hasn't got any shorts in it, which may have contributed to the loss of this transformer. Now the other thing to do is check the coupling capacitor, and uh, that's it there, I think. That's going over there, so that'll be it there, the coupling capacitor sitting in there. So probably the best thing to do is change that, just get it out of there before I put power on again. I don't want to lose this transformer. Before I do, uh, for my own interest, I might check the voltage there, change that capacitor and then see how much difference it makes, if any. I've connected my meter to the grid end of that capacitor and I've connected the other lead to the ground. Uh, we should have zero, uh, all things being good. So I'll put some power on. Now I've got my meter going over here. So it's settling around the 2 volt mark. Yeah, okay. So that should should be zero. So let me change that and we'll see what difference it makes. Alright, I've got a new capacitor in there. Uh, I'll turn it back on and we'll see what it's doing this time. The radio's warmed up and we're reading... Uh, what? Nothing. It's in millivolts, not even... not one millivolt there. So that's the difference, okay. I'll go and test the valve, put it in, and we'll see what sort of voltage drop we're getting between the grid and the cathode, and make sure it is a negative value. I've got my old valve tester out here. I used my new one, this is a 6M5 output valve, and I used the new one uh, to test this one, and as with every 6M5, it shows two or three shorts across it. I don't totally believe my new one, I think this uh, valve probably is okay. The problem with this tester is it does my head in every time I try and set it up. It's got levers going everywhere and I can't follow it. Anyway, I'm going to set it up and do it and I'll just show you the results as I go through. And the first thing I'm going to do is a shorts test. Now the first test is filament continuity. Uh, a glow in that light means that it's got continuity. Now I've set this up to check for shorts. Uh, there's the shorts light. Uh, I'm going to put this lever to F1 and no light means there's no short. So it's past the shorts test. So I've just got to set these levers to the correct uh, settings as per my chart here. Go and go to the merit setting, number 3. And this selector is to be 20. And we test it. It's perfectly alright. 90, 90% 90 almost. So that valve or tube is perfectly okay. Now having spent 15 minutes doing that, I'm going to go and take an aspirin and lie down. Everything's back together. I've got the original valve in there. Uh, I'm going to put my meter on the cathode there and the grid. So we should be able to see uh, the difference between the two. And it should be 5 volts, but we're on restricted power, so it won't be. It'll be something less. I'll put some power on. Everything's looking good. The globe's gone out. I've got this connected to the shop speaker as well. I can check the meter there, and we've got minus two. We're going to get the three or so. So minus three volts. Uh, we're on restricted power. We've only got 184 going in. Yeah, we're not going to get the five volts or six volts. Now, this was probably putting a hum in there. I'll get rid of that. Nope. Nope. Okay. So it's got a fair, fair sized hum. These capacitors need to go. That should work. Put the antenna on it, eh? People saying, yep, Lisa Wilkinson said throw in a full body spank, going to the bathroom becomes a day trip. Um, caught the act. Now we know that that is Shane, mm -hmm. the man dresses as Courtney to become a performer. Modern but times. As Courtney says, there's a lot of taping. There's a lot of well, that's working all right. Massive hum in it. These caps need to go. Uh, I'll just turn it over and just see what it does do. I'll turn it off before I turn it over. Hmm. Alright, I've turned it over. Um, Around 
It's hard to relax into a holiday when the trip there is full of mishaps because the journey is just as important. Yeah, 23 made it across the Nullarbor where they hit WA's hard border and went into hotel quarantine there. And South Australian Premier Stephen Marshall has confirmed. All right, the boat's working pretty well. So I think what I'll do is go and change the electrolytics and all the other capacitors as I always do. Uh, There's no point in leaving those in there as far as I'm concerned. I've also got to work on this um, switch here that's not working. Maybe give it a bit of a clean up, it's not too bad. I'll shut it off and get started. It's a new day, before I change the capacitors I thought what I would do is just clean this up a bit then all the junk that falls down and gets dirt down in the bottom I can wipe up as I change the capacitors. So this radio has got some sort of gunk on it, I, I guess it's nicotine but it seems to have just fallen on it, it hasn't covered everything and it's not on the chassis itself, it's just sitting on things like that, well it probably is on there but it doesn't show up. As an example there, there's a little tank circuit on the antenna um, and look the resistor is just covered in brown black stuff around the coil of course. So I'll try and get that off, I don't know, I can't do much with that. I'm not going to worry about showing it, me cleaning the chassis, I've done hundreds of them so we've seen it all before. I'll just spray a bit of that though just for interest and see if it'll come off. I'm just going to use this starting fluid as I always do. So the more I look at that it probably is nicotine. Alright, oh well I'll just have to scrub at it, it's not coming off as easily as I'd hoped. I'll just clean this up as best I can then and uh, I'll have a look when I finish. There it is, it's all cleaned up, it doesn't look much different really. Uh, to get this brown off here and other places I had to use acetone. But it was strange, it only stuck to certain places, so I don't know what was going on. Anyway, it's uh, it's all done and uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I think I'll go and do the capacitors. I'm back inside again and I've set up the chassis nice angle and uh, yeah, it's quite stable. I'm going to replace all these caps as usual. I'm not going to show you, there's plenty of videos on how to replace caps if you don't know. Uh, but basically I'll desolder these uh, joins here with my desoldering gun. Try and unwrap the original lead and try and feed the new lead in the same place so we get a good join. So the next time you see this it'll have all new capacitors. Now I've changed all these capacitors, uh, changed the electrolytics on the end here. Here's the casualty list over here. Uh, I changed about three resistors. Uh, they were out of spec. The other ones were pretty good so I've left them in there. So I'll flip it over and we'll test it out see if it works. I'm all set up. I've got the shop speaker connected. Uh, I've got an antenna on the back here. And we're ready to go, I think. Uh, oh, still on dim bulb. Lights are on. AFL Grand Final public tickets sold out in less than 20 minutes today. The NRL Grand Final teams list are out for this Sunday's clash. The Storm have named the same side that beat the Raiders last week. Queensland Theatre returns. Mm -hmm. Which they came from. Hospital and Health Service says there'll be a full investigation into the reason an orderly assisted. Alright, that sounds like it's working. Um, it's very deep because of the speaker, the shop speaker is very bassy. Um, I'll just get a full pair, I think. So we've got 233 and 30 watts, that's about right. In the UK, authorities in Manchester are still deciding whether the city will abide by new coronavirus restrictions as the Prime Minister threatens to impose the measure. To help keep you look for longer, available at Woolworths, Coles and Priceline, search rapid loss today. The earlier crash heading out to Aspley on Zilmi Road, just between Dorval Road and Gibby Road. Uh, that's working fine. One thing I didn't mention was that I cleaned all the bases for the valves and their pins, uh, so everything's pretty good. Yeah, so I think they're okay. I want to check the alignment, but I think it'll be all right. I don't think it'll need any adjustment, but I've got to put the speaker on and the dial plate. So before I do that, I'll fix this switch because I can get to it a little bit easier without all the uh, superstructure around it, uh, a bit easier to solder and all that sort of thing. So I'll do that now. I've taken the switch out and it looks pretty simple. It's just a matter of bending these tags back. Yeah, 
Okay, so that's just an over center. Uh, flicking that over, we'll get that over center. There's a pin there, and then that pin goes all the way through, and it contacts with this little lug here, and contacts this lug here, which is that one there. So it will join them together via that pin. Now, of course, I can clean that pit there, but that's the only one. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. The only real thing I can probably do is put some deoxid in there. I can't. I could slip uh, some. Uh, I can slip something between here to to clean the bottom of this and this one, but I can't do the bottom. So not going to be much value there. So perhaps just some uh, deoxid. I'll try and clean that in a bit and see what we can do. I've just got a bit of paper in there. Uh, this is pretty useless, really. Yeah, not much success with that. Um, I think the only thing I can do to it is spray it with some deoxid and just hope that it is enough to clean it up. Oops. It's a bit more than I wanted. And hope that cleans it up. All right, well, I'll let that soak for a couple of minutes and come back. We'll stick the meter on and see what it does. That's been five minutes. I'm just connecting my multimeter to the one side here. And it's um, open at the moment, so I'll just flick it over. See what we get. Perfect. Wow. Okay. Try the other one. And that's perfect as well. So, huh, how about that? All right. In all fairness to the switch, I didn't apply any power to this. So, if I had of it, may have been enough to just uh, do a bit of a spark and clean itself anyway. Uh, but anyway, we've had a look inside the switch, so that's always fun. So, I just bend the tabs back, put it all back together, and uh, we should be right. Now while I've got that disconnected, I'll put a new lead on it, and Carl's got in these new uh, cream coloured leads, and these I reckon suit pretty well with the old 50s, 60s cream coloured radios. Uh, nice and flexible, and uh, nice and thin too, they're not uh, heavy, thick uh, sort of rubber that you normally get. So uh, if you need some of these, I reckon then these, these are 2 metres long, and Carl's link is in the description, so yeah, good on you Carl, that's a good idea. I've mounted the new cord and put a fuse in. And it's wired back to the switch, which should be working now. Now with the switch working, I'll replace this uh, speaker assembly. During the week, a gentleman named Ken Sowers contacted me and uh, said he can do reverse engineering of parts. So he said he can re reproduce uh, automobile parts and home uh, hardware, apparently. Whatever that means. Maybe if you've got old hardware you want to reproduce. But he's got 3D printers, he can print in metal and uh, plastics, uh, he can reverse engineer something, so if you've got something you want made, he can do it. He said it might suit the um, radio restoration fraternity. So worth a call, I would have thought. Uh, I'll give you his email address in the description below. He's got a phone number as well, uh, but he can do in uh, metal or uh, plastic 3D printing. He can do the 3D design off your uh, sample. So. Uh, he said he can do it anywhere in the world, he can, doesn't matter where you live, and he said his fees are very reasonable. That's done, I'll put the dial glass on. So I guess if you wanted something made, perhaps get uh, several made at the same time of the same thing, uh, you could probably advertise and sell them off and cut your costs, or maybe even get it for free if, you, if you're good enough. Uh, as I said, I'll put his details and his contacts in the description below, uh, with a little excerpt of these note that he sent me. That might be helpful for people trying to get uh, parts reproduced. And the fact that he can do uh, metal 3D printing is pretty impressive too, so that might be good for some gears and pot metal stuff that's failed over the years. I noticed there's some little dots here, um, so they must be for alignment. There's ZL, so that's 600. Uh, there's XY, so that's uh, 1400. Not sure what that is. End of the band. Maybe that's the alignment. Or maybe that's the alignment. I don't know. Alright, I've just straightened that little cursor up and moved it along a bit. Now it's perfectly in line with the dot. 
and I've got the uh, tuning capacitor fully closed. I'm just going to do a quick check of the alignment, but uh, one thing I noticed was these IF cans are sealed top and bottom. They're not sealed, but they're are coated in something to stop it moving around or looks like someone's broken into that oh i'm not sure anyway i can't move it um, so what i'm going to do is just check each individual if can and make sure they're uh, lined to 455. i'm all set up here i've put an analog um, meter on the plate of the output valve and that's over here i put my signal generator into the um, if amplifier grid Here's the IF amplifier and detector valve. So it's getting a signal from this transformer and passing it into this transformer here. I've connected into the grid, which is pin two, and that's gonna put the 455 signal into there and come out there and we should be able to resonate that coil or check the resonance of that coil. And I'm reading it here with the analog meter at this plate. So I'll turn the volume up. I'll just kill the speaker. I've got it on the uh, dummy load now. We'll just watch that meter. Now I'm going to change the frequency on the generator and we'll see what we end up here on this meter here. That should come back to 455 if it's peaked at 455. So I'll just move away from the set point of 455 and just try and peak it. That's right there. So that's 454.93. So I'll call that 455. I'm happy this number two IF transformer is resonating at 455. I'll move this up to the next valve up, which is the mixer valve, and we'll try the same test again. I've moved my generator and its 0.01 capacitor up to the grid of the uh, mixer valve or the converter valve. And so the signal's now going into the mixer and we'll be able to check the number one IF transformer. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I've got it at 455. I will move away from 455 and then come back and we we'll, should come back with 455 if it's correct, correctly aligned. That seems to be about there, I think. And that says 455.04. So they're perfect. I don't need to touch them, which is just as well, because they're all sealed up. I can't move them if I wanted to. So I'll take this generator away and the capacitor, and we'll just uh, check the tracking on the, um, on the dial pointer here. I'm set up for checking the dial alignment. Um, now, this radio's got an oscillator down here. You can adjust that. This is fixed. There's a trimmer here on the antenna. And here's an antenna uh, adjustment here as well. I've got the generator on 600 and there's a little dot on the dial glass here where we've got to line up the 600 with our needle. So I'll just wind that up. And that's pretty close. I'll turn the sound off. I'm just adjusting the oscillator coil, which you would adjust at the bottom end of the scale, the 600 end. And, and really not getting much out of that, so that's pretty close. There we go. Now the next part of that adjustment is, while it's on 600, is this little coil here. This is the um, padder, I guess, for the for the aerial. So, or the aerial coil. That's about... It's still going off. I can slide this rod along a bit. It just keeps going. And I think that's about it. We're not getting any better there. Yeah, just starting to fall off. So uh, I'll glue that there. Uh, I assume the pad, the rod will still fit in the radio there. So the next thing to do is drive the tuning condenser up to 1400 and check it there. I've set the generator to 1400 and we'll just see if we can get any better than that. No, it's got a little bit out. Well, that's close enough. I wouldn't be worrying about that. 
There's no trimmer adjustment for the oscillator unless I start winding off bits of wire and I'm not doing that. So I'll just pick this trimmer on the top of the antenna capacitor and I'm calling it quits. And that's peaked anyway. There you go. That's it. I'm not doing anything else. If I did want to worry about the slight misalignment at 1400, uh, because the oscillator trimmer is fixed, it's been done at the factory, I would have to move the pointer physically along the string to line it up with the dot. Tune the generator and the radio to 600 and adjust the pattern to line it up. Adjust this little trimmer again and then go back to 1500 and just keep just doing that until we got it right. Now I'm not particularly worried because our stations don't line up. They change from uh, 10 kilocycles to 9 in the 70s sometimes. So this dial glass is out anyway. Uh, the end of the scale, the low end, is where all the stations are around here. So uh, it really doesn't make any difference. So that's why I'm not worrying about it. But that is how I would have to do it to fix it. Well, I've taken all the test gear off. Uh, we'll just turn it up and give it a run through the channels, or the stations I should say. She was a fairly lazy way to KQ on iHeart Radio. Thank you very much. It's Scott from Caboolture. Right, well that's working okay. There's a little fair bit of static coming in and it may be because this has got a built-in antenna as well. Uh, but anyway, I'll take it outside with the antenna on it. It should pick something up outside. It won't pick anything up in this house. Well, there's not much I can do to this now. Um, i just have a look at the case and uh, clean that up a bit. And I think we can put it all together. We've got some rain at last. It hasn't rained for ages. Now I'm going to have a go at just cleaning this case up a bit. Uh, it's got some minor scratching on the top there. Uh, it also has some scratching here on the front of the clear part here. Now that's fairly intrusive. You can, you know, it stands out quite a bit. It looks like someone's wiped it with cloth or something. So to polish it, I'm going to use some Meguiar's Plastex, and uh, I'm a bit short of time, so now it's even faster. It's good. So hopefully this will clean it off, and I don't have to use anything uh, more uh, abrasive, I suppose. It really hasn't cleaned it at all. That's slightly better, but it's it's still got these scratches in it. Uh, yeah, they're quite deep. So I'm going to revert to a headlight cleaner kit. Now this is a headlight lens cleaning kit. Um, there's four grades of paper here. That's that's the roughest, second roughest, and there's the third, and it's uh, smoother again on the other side on that one. So I don't want to start with the rough one. I'll start at number two, I think. There's a spray lubricant there, which you put on. really doing anything there though there's not enough abrasive on this pad I'm gonna to have to go the, the coarser one I think it's kind of getting there it's taking it off but it's a bit slow I'll go to the green one now this one's pretty abrasive you know where you, you can feel it <laughs> I've been doing that for about 30 seconds now and it's nearly gone I'll just keep going. All right, well, I've been doing that for about, I don't know, three or four minutes, so we'll just have a quick look. Yeah, I'd say that's gone. It's all gone. All right, good. But it's roughed up that surface pretty bad. All right, so I've got some lube sprayed on there, and this is number two. And I'll do the whole lens with this one. Right, I've been doing that for about a minute, so I'll just see what it looks like. That's looking pretty good. It's um, it's kind of opaque the whole way now, uh, but that area that I've done, I can still see it there, so I need to keep working at it for a bit. All right, I've been doing that for another uh, probably two minutes now. 
and it looks all right that spot here where I uh, removed the scratches is, uh, is all one uh, level of uh, scratching now <laughs> so this is pad number three all right well that's been a few minutes doing that as well doesn't look very clear I gotta say yeah it's not it's not terribly clear yet uh, I've still got one level to go so I'll do that All right, well that's the last shot we've got. Not really, I've got some other polishes I can use. This doesn't clear it up. Well, it's not bad, it's still cloudy. Uh, there's still another step to go. This is the final step. It's a lens clarifying compound, which I assume is some sort of plastic polish. So we'll see what this does. Now that polish has cleaned it up considerably, it's uh, very nice and shiny now, so that's looking pretty good. It still needs work and I think the back of it's dirty too, so it's, it's probably uh, not showing up as well as it could. Uh, but no, it looks good and the scratches are gone pretty much. Now as I said, the case is in pretty good condition. It's a bit dirty, a bit grubby is probably about all. It's got a couple of little marks on it here and you may not be able to see them, it just looks like smudges. So I'm going to use the Meguiars on that as well and I reckon that'll come up okay. I'll just try that bit where the smudges are, or whatever they are. Uh, you can probably see it there, it's just some sort of mark, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, so something a bit coarser to get it off. Now I'm reluctant to use car polish on this because I just don't know what's going to happen to the plastic. If I was going to use a bit of car polish, uh, I would uh, try it on the bottom first to make sure it didn't react with it. Uh, otherwise Brasso perhaps would uh, maybe move it. I've got some Brasso on a rag, I tried it on the bottom of the radio and it was fine. Uh, I've moved the camera so you can see that mark, I hope. I'll just see if the Brasso takes it off. The Maguires didn't. Uh, it was made nice and shiny, but it's still there. Uh, I'll just try some of this um, lens cleaner, see if that'll sand it away. Yeah, it's still there. It's not as bad, but it's still there. I'm going to try some coarse paper on it. Um, I'm a bit loath to, to do this, but I want to get rid of that mark if I can. Yeah, that's pretty much gone. There's still some little craters there, but they're not too bad. So I'm getting, getting there. Uh, I'll keep working with this, go through all the steps again and bring it back to uh, the original plastic, I hope. Anything is if I've done this here and it's left a light spot, I might be in trouble. All right, leave that with me and I'll come back when I've finished. There it is, it's all polished and uh, it's come up pretty good. It's come up really nice actually. Uh, still got some marks in it in places that you just can't get out. It's 70 years old, so uh, for 70 years old I reckon it looks pretty good. So I'll take it inside, I've got a few more things to do uh, and then we'll put the radio back. Now a couple of radios ago I did another Astor and it had an Astor badge in gold and the gold was a bit tacky but I didn't worry about it. Uh, but a number of people said, why don't you use a paint pen? So I went down the shop, bought a paint pen. This one's a Posca brand. Uh, it's, it's gold and it's just got a big felt nib on the top. So I've charged it already. We'll give it a go. And it's kind of doing what I thought it would do. And that is leave big blobs on it. So maybe I'll just put big blobs on it and that whole thing can meld, meld together. Like that. I'll just try doing the O as well. Well, there it is. Um, I was getting better as I went along I think. Uh, the first ones were a bit ratty looking. Anyway, uh, that'll that'll do. It's not, not that bad. So I'll let that dry and then I'll put the radio in. Time to put this back in its case.
let's turn it on and see what it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that knob's broken. That doesn't matter. I can use a pair of pliers to turn it on. Yeah, here we go. We'll try that. Oh, there. There you go. So it's got three knobs left, so that's not so bad. I'll just connect an aerial and we'll see how it works. Uh, well, that knob's no good either. Uh, that's only the tone knob, so whoever uses that doesn't matter. So I've still got two good knobs. Okay, time to come clean. I've had this radio for a little while and I haven't bothered restoring it because the knobs, you just, they're no good, they're horrid. I tried soaking them in bleach, I tried all sorts of things to clean them up, but you can't do it. But luckily, Carl's been making new knobs for these radios and they are really nice, really nice looking knob. Now I've only got one knob left, but before it falls off, I'll put these on, we'll have a look at that. And there it is with the new knobs, and they look really, really good. So Carl's doing a good job for us here. So these old knobs can go in with the rest of the junk out of the radio. Carl's selling these from his eBay store, so uh, I'll put a link in the description. At the time I'm making this video, they're in pre-order only. He hasn't got them in stock. Uh, these are sample ones, and he was gracious enough to let them go and let me have them to put on the radio. I'm very happy with this. It's come up very nice. I'll just, um, I'll just turn it up so you can hear it. It won't be any different to normal. All that is work. Share. You know share, don't you? I do know share. Share, not sure. Uh, released a song... I, I'm one of those who always called a sure. Sure, share. Yeah. It's share. That sounds good. That uh, song there that was just on, um, sounds really good. A nice big speaker on these. Good solid uh, cabinet and sealed at the back. Uh, so the sound's pretty good. This is an Astor model BPJ, uh, made in about 58 to 62. It's the same model my brother had, and he put it on a dressing table and we used to listen to it. And the song that used to come on in the morning, just about every morning, was Manfred Mann, do a uh, diddy diddy dum diddy do. So I remember we used to lie there waiting for it. Came on after the news pretty much every morning. A bit like Groundhog Day. So just another one of those wacky memories I have. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Keep an eye out for these knobs if, you, if you've got one of these sets. I'll also put in the description uh, that uh, Ken Sowers chap, he uh, can reverse engineer parts. So um, print them out uh, plastic or metal. So I'll leave him there. He might be quite handy for uh, the restorers. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was pretty much just fixing radios, so maybe not very interesting to some people. If you did enjoy it, please join me for my next radio adventure.